What's up everybody? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Jen and you've made it over here to Copper Cactus DIY. This is my home for all things furniture, makeovers, flips, restoration, and faux finishing. In today's video, I'm gonna be working on this side table right here. This is my husband's side table for the sofa and we've had this piece for well over 20 years. It's a beautiful Duncan Fife inspired side table and I can't wait to do a restoration on this. It does have some issues though. It's really wobbly. That's because it's actually missing one of the claw feet and the top kinda swivels. So if videos like this one are your jam, then don't forget to hit that big old red subscribe button right down below. So I'm just gonna get started on this piece right away, giving it a solid clean, and then I'm gonna take this thing apart and start assessing all of the individual pieces to see just exactly what I need to do. To clean today, I'm gonna use a bucket of warm, clean soapy water, this lint-free rag, and my kitchen gloves. This table gets regular cleaning, so I knew it wouldn't be too bad, but I really got a good look at every nick, gouge, and chip on this side table. I knew I had my work cut out for me, but had no clue just how much I'd have to do. furniture definitely Boston as far as markings go on this thing this is what I just discovered it said like 22 a 22 2007 I can assure you this wasn't created in 2007 because I actually picked this up off the side of the road in like year 2000 2001 you can see it's just a disaster underneath. This is obviously the original little wood block, but those shims holding it up, that's another story. And then for the manufacturer tag, I'm gonna guess that was like Payne Furniture Company, Boston, Massachusetts. I definitely know it's Boston because you can see the B-O, the O-N, there's two S's there, that would be Massachusetts, and I think Payne Furniture was a thing. I'll put up, I'll put some information down in the description if that manufacturer is who made this piece. Then we've got all this in here. Those screws are obviously much newer, so I feel like it probably just started falling apart and someone many, many years ago put these straps on. That was not me. But I'm gonna try to avoid going around the sticker, just in case. And I am gonna try to find out more information on that. I wish I showed the water before I actually did the underside because it wasn't nearly this disgusting before I did the underside. And I keep going, wiping it down. I did one pass with a clean wet rag to remove any residue, then I left it to dry. I'm gonna start out sanding just in these edges here as best as I can, and I'm just gonna use a 220 grit sanding disc that I cut up ages ago so that I could fit um, the piece onto my mouse sander. This is gonna take a hot minute, so here we are. I sanded the wood but wanted a preview of how it was going to look once I added a top coat. Try to get back down to that raw wood. Yep, yeah, it's getting 
in there. Um, that's the kind of stuff that's going to come off of this thing. I'm not at all surprised. As I came around the table, I realized this wasn't my best laid plan. The paper struggled to get all the way down into the grooves. So I ran out and I made my life and this project much easier. I bought this contour scraper set at Harbor Freight. It comes with a metal file for sharpening the blades and wasn't too expensive. And it did exactly what I hoped it would do, getting all of the stain out of the small grooves. To scrape in the leg grooves, first I had to remove the brass claw feet. These were original, but it's missing one of them. I'm still on the hunt for a good heavyweight brass foot just like this. If you know where I should look for these, please leave me a comment down below. And with the feet off, I could scrape down the leg grooves. I only had to sharpen it a couple of times while I was working. This tool really impressed me and I'm definitely happy to have it in my furniture restoration kit. To sand this piece, I'm going to use graduating grits of 100, 120, and 220, and my Craftsman Random Orbital Sander. I took it slow and steady, putting very light pressure on the sander. When I got to the 220 grit, most of the finish sanded off really easily. I loved what the wood looked like underneath all that stain, and I kept going until the entire piece was sanded to smooth. I took off the metal strapping to start disassembling the legs from the pedestal. Okay. I don't even know how to go about doing this. Someone tried and I've got to get these legs out because that rubber cement is not going anywhere if I don't... How they're created. There aren't any. I might just have to do the same dang thing. Oop. Well, now we know. She's rough, man. That is rough. All right, so it would have been two dowels. This is gonna end up just having to be glued back in. All right, I'm gonna scrape out some of this crap in here too, old finish and varnish and stuff. And then I don't really have a choice but to just put it back in here. How am I gonna hold it in though? That's the real question. Not to get all foreshadowy, but that question didn't get answered until a few days later when I was putting the base back together. I guess I thought I could somehow avoid the problem and magically find a solution anyway. Hang tight to see how that all went down. Only three legs came apart, but I sanded the flat parts of all four with the orbital. Hmm. Okay, well, we'll see what happens there. Oh man, that needed like, that needed so much. It's fine, I'm gonna, I'm gonna deal with it. But I'm not gonna deal with it till tomorrow morning cause your girl's tired. I got started bright and early the next morning by removing these shims. 
My 14-in-1 made pretty quick work of this very dry wood. Then I used a popsicle stick for leverage and I pried out those small nails with the edge of the tool. I took the block off the pedestal and started sanding the pedestal off camera. I finished up using a 120 grit and later a 220 grit to smooth everything down. I also did my laundry off camera. While removing the legs, I found out just how dry the wood is. Oh no! Dude, you an idiot. Okay, stop right now. Where did that go? Gonna keep that. So I glued and clamped that chip back in, but I completely forgot to record it. Since I had the whole piece though, I knew the grain would match up perfectly once it was sanded down. While I was sanding down the grooves, I tried to maintain the original rounded profile. Some spots came out better than others, but nothing turned into a square or a triangle. I'm calling that a win. My fingers hurt. That's about as good as that's gonna get. Okay. I also glued up another chip out, but I did it off camera. This time it was on the pedestal. I sanded that to smooth as well, and I removed all the dried old glue chunkers, but I also did that off camera. Now, it might seem premature to start varnish before I put the thing back together, but the metal ring that lives at the top of this pedestal, yeah, it has to go on before I put the top on. And TBH, I really just needed to do something other than sanding for a few minutes. I gave the entire pedestal one solid coat of Faux Effects Satin Varnish. And while that dried, I used my vinegar and water solution, plus a scrubbing sponge, to degrease the brass. After a quick rinse, I dried it with a microfiber rag, and the brass ring was ready to install. Another thing I did off camera. The screws attaching the pedestal to the top had worn away the wood over time and were dangerously close to poking through. So I used some of the leftover shelf material from my fall challenge piece to thicken the block. But plywood has a rough edge, so I'm using edge banding to seal up all four sides to smooth. I used an iron and parchment paper to adhere the glue-backed veneer. I trimmed it down off camera. I added a custom mix stain to the block and the filler piece. And once that dried, I could glue and clamp the two pieces together. And I left it to dry. Then it came time to glue up the legs. Peeps, remember when I asked this at the start of the project? How am I gonna hold it in though? Well, the time finally came to figure it out. So I went to Rockler, and I left with two 12-inch squeeze clamps and a plan to create a clamping jig. Well, that's janky AF, but we're gonna see if it works. Let's just test it. Please work. I mean, it's gonna push too hard on there. Just not really good at this. <laughs> okay. I sanded it down until I got the fit that I wanted. Okay, I'm actually gonna try to record attempt three here because attempt two went all right. So we'll just see if I just have tool-related camera fright or if this 
crap is actually gonna work for me. Let's um, give it a go. By some miracle, my third try went fine, so I repeated the sanding process until it fit snug to the leg. These blocks give a flat and square edge for the clamps to grip, while the curved part applies pressure to the leg so that it stays in place. I used double-sided tape to adhere to the leg, but this was really tough to do alone, so I did the actual gluing off-camera. But here's a few pictures so you can see how complicated this setup actually was. I had to do them all one at a time. By the last glue up though, she was level, so I left it to dry overnight. I drilled the center hole for the pedestal screw. I used a bit just slightly smaller than the screw so it would pressure fit all snugly like. I pre-drilled through the screw holes too, and I ended up having to widen the countersink hole just a smidge, but that happened off camera. I did a quick dry fit to make sure everything lined up okay. The screws went in and secured the top to the base. All right. She's solid, baby, and let's just make sure that nothing goes through the front. Please, God, please. That feels like nothing poked through the front. Mm -hmm. Super smooth. By this point, I was fully ready to be done with this project. It was fun, but much more work than I originally expected. So putting the legs onto the top felt like sweet victory. All I had left to do was top coat. I started on the underside, giving one coat to everything. Then I gave the top and sides of the legs two coats and my full restoration of this Duncan Fife inspired side table was finally done. Well, there you have it. Now, I know there are some things still left, like finding and attaching some brass claw feet, but as of now, I love how she turned out. What do you think? Leave me a comment and let me know, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of my furniture refinishing videos. And I'd just like to take a second here to really welcome all of my brand new subscribers. I feel like I won the lottery. You're all so welcoming and awesome and kind, and I'm so psyched to have you join the fun time party. But that's all I've got for you today. Thanks so much for being here and watching. Later, peeps. All right, how's now, that? Now you got a little more room and you look all cash. Oh, it's backwards. Well, whatever, it's fine. I show the I show the claw feet in the other thing. It's, it's fine. It is backwards. Okay.
think anyone will notice if I just flip it real fast? Nope. All right, great. We'll start over then. Great. Right? I don't think I need to say anything else. <laughs> Give it a like. This assembly is my cardio today. I'm not going to film any of it because if I film it, that's when I screw up. 